Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming in to talk about the My Hero Academia Chapter 322 Spoiler. It's going to have a fun time with this one. I want to say, I think this was a great chapter in general. I do think there's a few points that are kind of like, eh. Uh, but they're, the problems I see here are probably the same problems that plague the rest of this uh, three chapter run. That being that some things have to happen because they're forced to that particular direction. But still, I have my thoughts about them. Uh, overall, still a great chapter. Kirishima got his bare minimum, which I am absolutely over the moon for. But there is just the return of some concerning rhetoric that I can only really hope that it's something worthwhile next time that we have another chapter. 323 is going to have a delay because uh, um, not this week, but next week there is no uh, Shonen Jump because I think maybe the Olympics. Anyway... Let's get into it. My Hero Academia, Chapter 322. I've got a, a summary here um, from another Twitter account. So I'll make sure to link that Twitter account because this one isn't the usual one. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. The chapter starts with Izuku thinking that he has to break free from Ida's hand, but he has no power left. At that moment, Ochako released her quirk, so Deku and Ida were both free-falling. Ida worried that they couldn't land safely, but Kirishima was there to catch them. At that moment... Kirishima told Izuku back in the day that he heard there is a guy that who ran off to save a friend, a sludge villain incident. He asked Izuku if it was him. Kirishima, Kirishima told him that Izuku at that time uh, was is their answer. Ida asked how his timing could be so nice, and Kirishima told him it was Endeavor's order. All right, there is so much wrong in that particular thing that it's concerning. Um, and for this one, you know how we do. We're going to look at the Tumblr translation because the Tumblr translation gives us a more, it gives us a better play-by-play. -play. There's a lot of problems here that, that I hope are kind of addressed in another spot. But this, there's some real insanity going on here. First off, Ochako. I need to understand in what world did Ochako think it would be okay to apply... I, oh, I just don't know, man. I need to see the trajectories. I don't understand in what world Ochako would think it's okay to apply or to deactivate the effect on Ida to have Ida go down towards the sky with the, with the gravitational force acting on two people instead of one. Like, what were they thinking? Why did Ochako let go of the damn power? Why didn't she have Bakugo or Tokoyami fly up to them to catch up to them and catch them instead of releasing them to the floor? Like when you look at the trajectory on the spoilers, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Look, even in the chapter, Ida's asking, can we land safely? The guy didn't know, and Ojako just thought, oh, whoop de doo gonna release it. What the heck, man? No, 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 no. This was terrible. That was absolutely terrible. There is no way that that is justified. Ochako is slow in the head. Um, and then the stuff for Kirishima gets even worse. Because this summary says that Kirishima told him it was Endeavor's order. No, 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 no. No. Ida tells Kirishima, you certainly are at the right time and place, Kirishima. And Kirishima's like, we're here thanks to Endeavor's instruction. Coincidentally. Coincidentally, this guy was saved. Coincidentally, they were able to catch him. And I have so many problems with the physics here. Just because Kirishima is saying that he won't fall over when he catches the boys, bro. I don't care if Kirishima is as hard as a mountain. That's still two people hitting a very, very sharp mountain. You're telling me that, that Ida was going at a speed that was able to break apart his costume, but somehow those two aren't able to die when they collide against the solid mass that is Kirishima. Nah, man. Nah, there's a lot of... I don't think the physics works out here. They were at a height that if you jump off a building from, you die. That's flat it. And they... And then all their weight acts on one very sharp point. No. No. I, I need to see the actual real chapter. But the entire thing is insanity from the beginning to the end. The only reason this happens is because of Kirishima's conversation here. Where he has to be like, yo, you inspired me, bro, to Izuku. That's what it is. And like, even the guy's rhetoric about, I won't fall over. I think it'd be better if you did fall over. Because at least then, it's kind of like when you know when you jump up and you come back down, people th say, don't just keep your legs straight. You know, 
cushion some of the fall. If Kirishima falls over, that makes the physics, I think, a little bit nicer because if he goes hard right when he falls over, he's not going to have an issue on his back. But, oh, God, man. Um, on, on the first look on the spoilers, terrible. Uh, the summary does not do it justice. Um, also, like, this point here on the summary where it says, uh, the Deku at that time is their answer. Just to give a little bit more information there, what he's saying is, being special or having power doesn't matter. The you of that time is the present answer, is our present answer to you. Um, what he's just saying is, like, there's something cool about that first Izuku, not the Izuku that uh, is doing things here. But mind you, like that doesn't really make sense. We have to see the final translation because the Izuku of that time is the same Izuku that's here because Izuku of that time was sacrificing himself. He had no power. In spite of no power, he ran forward, sacrificing himself, putting himself in danger for the sake of another person. Now, mind you, what he's trying to say here is that they are going to be the Izuku of that time. But given that this is an arc about the fact that this Izuku is a natural progression of the Izuku of that time, what Kirishima is ultimately saying is that they're going to be celebrating the exact same traits that got Izuku into this position after enough exaggeration of the traits occur. We need to wait for the proper translation because like right now like it, this this is going to be very heavy wordplay um and i th i think things are not working out here uh, you should not be using self-sacrificial izuku from the first incident to try and get self-sacrificial izuku out of self-sacrificing or sacrificing right sacrificing himself same thing um yeah <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just so bad. Um, just from looking at the spoilers, uh, we have to wait. Anyway, going back to the summary, the rest of the class approached them, and Mina told Izuku to come back with them. Izuku said he wanted to, but he's scared and he doesn't want to cause trouble for other people. He continues saying that he can't go back to how things used to be. At that time, Bako asked him if he remembered what he said after he got impaled by Shigaraki. Izuku told, tells him no. So that actually explains a lot. Like, Izuku doesn't remember that Bakugo told him to not be an idiot. Uh, but Bako reminded him, that, don't try to win this on your own. He said there's still more, but uh, because when his body moved on its own, he got impaled. He thought to himself that he must tell Izuku something. Okay, so again... Um, the summary misses um, something pretty cool, and it's with Mina. So Mina, actually, uh, the summary betrays the actual emotions. She says, I don't want anybody else to disappear anymore. Um, that's just flat out Mina reacting to the situation with uh, Midnight. And she says, let's go back to have classes again with everyone. So she wants to return to normalcy. Uh, this is not a very good rhetoric because normalcy isn't coming until All for One's in the ground, and it's not coming until Shigaraki is saved. Uh, so this is just not going to be coming for her anytime soon. I wonder if the author is going to continue that rhetoric, because that rhetoric is uh, is pretty dangerous for this type of situation. Anyway, Izuku had always been someone who he looked down upon because Izuku was quirkless. This is Bakugo talking. But although Izuku should be far behind him, Bakugo felt that somehow he was far ahead of him. He didn't like that, he didn't want to see it, and he didn't want to admit it. That's why he wanted to keep Izuku at arm's length, so he bullied him. Bakugo wanted to deny Izuku, so he tried to be in a superior spot, but he admitted that he lost. After they entered UA, nothing went according to how Bakugo planned. Every day was filled with realizing Izuku's strengths and understanding his own weaknesses. Bakugo said even though he said all this, he knows that it wouldn't do any justice, but this, these are his real feelings. He then said Izuku sorry for everything until now, which is really like the best part of this chapter, him using Izuku's name and apologizing. Although, you know, now that he's talking about how his history in UA, and he's saying out loud how he was treating Izuku, I think to some degree a good portion of the class also has to apologize to Izuku. Because they were complicit in this. Not a lot of people called out Izuku, um, called out Bakugo. I'm going to have words about her for later. But Ochako is one of the few people that actually interacts with Bakugo on any meaningful level about this. And maybe Ida, depending on how you see like him chastising Bakugo. But I, if Bakugo is going to apologize, I think a good portion of the class needs to apologize too. Because ba Izuku was, get, was being yelled at by Bakugo all the time. Um, so if he's going to take accountability for this... And Bakugo's talking about the entire history. I think 
maybe some of them should probably apologize to Izuku for allowing Bakugo to go as far as he did. Uh, Bakugo continued by saying that the path Izuku and All Might took was not wrong, but right now Izuku is unsteady and there are things that even ideals All Might cannot surpass. Um, well, yeah, probably like sleep. Uh, so for the things Izuku couldn't handle, he wants Izuku to let them handle it. In order to surpass All Might, the ideal hero, he will save Izuku, refugees in the UA, and the civilians to win and save to win, which is just calling back to um, joint training pretty much. Uh, just what he was going to be doing. A narration starts. Izuku is saying that all of his classmates are already leagues ahead of him. Then he starts regretting what he said in the last chapter about how they can't keep up with him. He says sorry and suddenly his body gives in. But Bakugo catches him before he hits the ground and says we know you are. They all look tired and relieved. Momo says they resolved the first problem but the next one may be even harder. Which just leads into the issue that's going to be happening at the end. Um, so this situation with what Izuku said. And uh, Izuku's apologizing for saying, like, they can't keep up. They can't. They legitimately can't keep up. Kirishima legitimately could not keep up to the point that he was relegated to another uh, another area by Endeavor. Legitimately, it took, like, a good chunk of them pushing and making an ice ramp to be able to catch up to a, to a debilitated and Izuku that was going easy on them. No, this is just hardcore reality. No amount of friendship talk is going to obscure this reality and i'm pretty sure that by the end of here academia a lot of this is going to be overwritten by the reality of the situation it's just the author is not going to bring any attention to it because if he brings attention to it he's going to break the rhetoric that's going on here um again i can appreciate the emotion of the situation but on paper there's still some concerning things occurring here but again we'll have to see like the exact wording on the next chapter anyway we move on in the summary. Deku opens his eyes and the students hurry to warn number 13, who's not wearing her helmet. She tells him that almost all the pacifist civilians have been allocated under some evacuation area. And the ones outside are mostly the groups of the anti-hero protesters. It's not anti-heroes, it's anti hero faction protesters or extremists that have gone wild alongside the jailbreakers uh the extremists are probably people connected to the liberation army in all honesty more and more protesters are giving up and extremists are easy to catch so the situation is getting better she says izuku's solo journey really helped the heroes and the police oh who would have thought right wow who would have who would have thought um but no what they're just saying like they're saying the protesters are giving up. That's because the situation is shitty and nothing's getting better. The protesters are realizing they are not built for this. Um, and for the extremists, they're just idiots. Uh, that's why it's getting better. Um, Izuku's solo journey really helped the heroes and police. Yeah, well, with a few very significant villains, for sure. The UA barrier is now active and it looks like a giant iron fortress. Seto comments that this is just a taste of what it can actually do. When the system is activated, it even connects to Shiket too high. Izuku is still worried about going back to UA and he's not the only one because a lot of civilians are gathered near the gate saying that Izuku... So before I move on to that next section, um, they say that the UA barrier has more functions. That is something the kids are saying. So it's not just metal that uh, Shigaraki can destroy. So pray that there is some kind of energy barrier actually in place here. Anyway, they say he's the one Shigaraki is going after and that everyone's talking about it. In the actual translations, it looks like maybe not. It's more like rumors. Uh, President Mike tries to calm them down, but it's useless. They continue saying that they're that the principal guaranteed they'd be safe, and that's why they left their houses. Izuku starts to walk away, but Ochako holds his hand and stops him. She says everything will be all right, and her narration begins. She says that Bako, Ida, and everyone made this possible, and now they won't let him go once again. They won't let go of his hand. And the chapter ends with Ochako questioning, who will save heroes when they're in pain and turning around? And I am happy, because I'm reading the Tumblr translator as well and they think this question is stupid as well at this point uh, they would say like yeah decent people just be just be decent people um so you know i have a history with this question but if the next chapter is ochako saying that the community is you know heroes are saved by the people they save if you want to go down that route i'm actually going to be very happy with that if, but if ochako goes and says something like heroes save heroes and she doesn't acknowledge that she's as slow as Aizawa when he was hit by Kurono's quirk. If she doesn't acknowledge that and she says heroes save heroes, I'm just that's just a waste of time. Uh, there's also a possibility that this might be the moment of hope that Ochako gives. And it's like, if this is her moment of hope, the, it all relies on that next little bit. If this is the moment of hope coming up, I'm going to be severely disappointed. Because this is nothing. All she's doing is talking to an angry mob. Like, that's... I don't care. Um... Now, mind you, this summary, again, doesn't give you the exact um, situation with that mob. In the mob, 
there are people who are okay with this. Um, there was one person saying, hey, didn't the principal already explain things to us that our, sa our safety will be guaranteed? And then another person went in and said, as if we can be satisfied by that, are you? So there are some people talking back about this and other people are yelling. I do think that maybe it, it was a bad idea just looking at this to let the civilians know what was happening because civilians are stupid. I mean, I don't understand how you can have faith in the civilians when you're in a situation that civilians are actively making things worse. Um, but if there's one thing this does say is that Ned Zhu is true to his word and that at the end of the day, Ned Zhu cares more about Izuku to the point that he's willing to play this gamble with the civilians' lives and trust in the UA defense system, which is ultimately going to come down. Um, so that's going to be hilarious when that occurs. But... Yeah, no, even when you look at this, the fact that Nezu is allowing Izuku to be in here, knowing the risks, that's pretty much him saying, yeah, heroes help heroes. Um, so it's so funny, in a chap it, like in a series of chapters where you have everything being shown, you're showing who it is that can help Izuku when he's in danger, and you have Ochako reiterating, reiterating the question. At this point... I just don't know because sometimes the author has to be like super obvious, but it's just it's hilarious. And again, reading the Tumblr blog, I, I really like reading all their criticisms because it's pretty funny. And I do like that they um, that they're wary about Uraraka and that horrible rhetoric. This is just really horrible rhetoric to have to frame it like you could have Uraraka just facing the mob without saying anything about when heroes are in pain, who will protect them? Just be like, no, don't worry, Izuku, I will protect you. You don't even have to bring up that dang question anymore, man. The question's been answered time and time again. Um, but this is where we're going. Now, when you look at, this, uh, at the spoilers, we still have Aoyama and Hagakure who haven't gotten to speak yet. Not directly to Izuku, anyway. When it comes to that, this chapter had Kirishima and, Mi uh, and Mina have their moments. So I feel like next chapter is Ochako's big thing. And then you can maybe slot Aoyama and Hagakure there. I really hope, you know, this th this is it. This is the culmination of that question, really, for the next chapter. The author has to make sure that he really brings it with Ochako. He has to make that rhetoric really good because, man, there's so many ways to screw this up. And again, I really hope this isn't the moment of hope, the moment where she tells people to be decent. Can you imagine telling a crowd who is quite literally going through an apocalypse to be decent when their houses have been abandoned, when a bunch of them have probably lost family because of the chaos. Telling them to be decent to a kid that has a target on his back and might very well bring in someone who has a track record of breaking fortifications. I mean, the optics here, man. The optics. <laughs> it's going to be hilarious. Uh, but yeah. That's the, that's the summary. Uh, guys, let me know what you thought down below. Until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.